So Notion just rolled out a series of much needed design tweaks. And many of these will genuinely surprise you. And they give that interface a cleaner look by smartly hiding actions until you need them. This update finally delivers features we've been asking Notion for forever. Introduces some cool new features we didn't even know we needed and brings back a few old favorites that they had retired and that we've really missed. Let's break it down in eight parts so that you won't miss a thing. Database tables now have a cleaner, a much simpler appearance. Those dividing lines, they're all gone, giving it a more modern feel. Views now appear as sleek pill style tabs at the top of your database. These match the design language from Notion's earlier updates. They make it super easy to spot which views you're in. The calculate row, you know the one that's always at the bottom. It's now hidden by default. But not to worry, if you need totals, average, counts for a specific column, you can re-enable them whenever you want. If your database has only one view, Notion keeps things minimal by hiding the view label. The label appears if you hide the database title or you have more views. The old database menu is now simply called settings and it comes with a fresh new icon. What's even better is you can expand or collapse this section as needed, making it easier to stay focused when you're working on a busy page. Pages inside of a database now show a revised content indicator icon if they contain actual content. So if you have a combination of pages that have content inside and no content, you will immediately know which ones have content inside. Icons have been refreshed across the entire interface. They look sharper, cleaner, and give Notion a more polished modern feel. Colors and backgrounds have been brightened up and refined for text, improving their visibility, and that's a much needed request from the past. Now before these updates, changing properties meant navigating through to the database menu. Now it's much faster. A simple right click reveals powerful options for managing properties right from the column. You can change property types directly to most options. No more switching between settings and properties. Everything's in one place, streamlining the workflow. Now you can quickly add properties to filters or to sorts without leaving the column. And you can use properties to directly group data right from the column menu. The calculate feature lets you add totals or other calculations at the bottom of the column with options specific to that property type. The standard controls like freeze, hide, wrapping text, duplication, and delete are still available, thank God. Notion has restored the ability to insert new properties, either to the left or to the right of the existing one. And that's a much requested turn. You can now name a new property and choose its type in one streamlined step. Though the old method of typing first and naming later is still possible with a few extra clicks. In settings, there are two key options to help manage columns. One is called property visibility, where you can use the eye icon to show and hide properties and drag the six dots handle to reorder them. And the other one is edit properties. And that allows you to access advanced configurations, renaming, or adjust hover behaviors just like before. Plus, you can unlock the database just for yourself or for everyone if it's locked. The more settings options remain the same as before. There's this new double arrow control that lets you expand or collapse database controls, filters, sorts, search, a full page toggle, settings, etc. And this helps in cleaner workspace management. If a database is partially visible, for example, it's a narrow column, the three dot menu stays visible instead of settings. So Notion has introduced a new database layout. That view is called Feed View. And this is their first in quite a while. Feed View displays entries in a scrollable feed format, similar to Instagram or LinkedIn feeds. You can customize which properties to show, including page content and images. You can either add a new feed view or convert an existing table 
to feed view via settings. Now long entries show a see more button to expand the content inline. Clicking a title opens the full page directly. You can add comments to specific pages for focused discussions. This feature can be disabled globally under settings, custom layout, page settings, and page discussions. The feed view is ideal for browsing meeting notes, journals, CRM entries, or customer service logs, as an example. Now Notion has improved its CSV import functionality with some really useful updates. When importing a CSV through settings, import, CSV. You can now map property types directly to CSV columns or choose to skip specific columns entirely. This streamlines the process. You can easily set up dates, numbers, select or multi-select properties during import without having to reconfigure them afterwards. Now I've been advocating for a better colors in Notion for a pretty long time. As the light mode has become difficult to use, Notion has responded by refreshing colors, both for the light mode and the dark mode, making them brighter and more distinct. Now this may seem like a really small update, but trust me, it's a significant improvement. And I'm delighted with this enhanced readability and visual polish of the workspace, but we're not done yet. When locking a page, you can choose to unlock it just for yourself while keeping it locked for your teammates or to unlock it for everyone, just like the database. Now, this helps prevent accidental edits, especially when you're doing collaborative workspaces. And after publishing a page, you can now hide the large blue banner at the top. And instead you get this small blue globe icon that appears to indicate that the page is live. Inside Notion Calendar, you can now change the status property of tasks directly from the calendar view. And this feature works with newly created databases, though I think it may not be compatible with the existing ones since I'm having trouble. Now Notion quietly introduced a new formula operator and calls it count. So here's a simple example. Imagine you have a multi-select property with several options each indicating a department, and you want to count how many times a specific one appears. Let's say operations. With count, you can filter the property to include only operations and get that exact number all in one step. Now where this really shines is when you're working with relations and linked data from other databases. Instead of getting a full array or needing complex formulae, you can now return just a clean, simple count. Another way to level up your Notion workspace is with automation and building macros. Check out these two videos on your screen. They'll show you exactly how to make that happen.